This is a part two series on probability and how to use probability to determine outcomes of events. Now, you have independent events, which is where if an, an event's happening to where the first occurrence has no effect on the second occurrence. So for example, if you roll a dice and then you roll a dice again, the first dice, there's no effect on the second dice from the first dice. No matter what you roll the first dice, you still have an equal opportunity of what you get. Same thing with flipping a coin. Same thing if you choose a marble from a bag, you put it back, and then you pick out another marble, you still have just as much of a chance. Like you didn't change the occurrence of the event. There was no effect. And anytime that happens, then all you have to do is multiply the two probabilities together. So for example, a bag has three red marbles, four blue, and five green. What's the probability that you choose a green? So let's first stop there. Choose a green marble. Well, you have five green marbles and you have a total of 12 marbles in all. So the probability of choosing the green marble is five over 12. And then they say you replace it, which means you put the marble back, meaning you still have 12 marbles, and then you wanna choose another green marble. Therefore, the probability of you choosing another green is still five over 12, it didn't change, which means your answer is you multiply them together which would be 25 over 144. However, it becomes different if you keep the marble. So for example, same thing, and let's say the problem of you choosing a marble and they're both green. Well, what you're basically saying is you're choosing a marble, which we know is five out of 12. You're keeping it, and then you need another green marble. Well, if you already have one green marble, that means there's only four green marbles left in the bag, and there's only 11 total marbles left in the bag. In that case, the answer is gonna be 20 over 132, or five over 33. So if you keep the marble, it affects the second outcome and it no longer becomes an independent event. Next. In 1992, 56% of the population was 30 years old or older. Suppose that in a survey, 10 people were chosen. What's the probability that all 10 people were 30 years or older? So basically what you're doing is, let's say you're choosing just one person. Then if you're choosing one person from the population, you have a 56% chance or a 0.5%, I mean 0.56 of choosing a person older than 30. But let's say you're choosing all 10. Well, the first person is going to be a 0.56 chance. The second person will be a 0.56 chance. The third person will be a 0.56 chance. And so on 10 times, which means the answer would be 0.56 raised to the 10th power. How many people are you choosing? You're choosing 10. What was the percent of choosing that person? It would be 0.56%. So you would multiply, I mean, you would actually raise that to the 10th power. So 0.56 raised to the 10th would be a 0 0.003 chance. Percentage, not percentage, would be a 0 0.003. So it would be a 0.3% chance that you actually, all 10 people would be 30 years or older. The complement of an event basically is when the event doesn't happen. And if 100% uh, is the entire sample space and you're wanting to know what the probability of when it doesn't happen, you would subtract from basically that 100% or just that one. Now, Venn diagrams are very helpful when it comes to trying to figure out especially mutually exclusive and independent events. So for example, you have the probability of A, you have the probability of B, and then the outside of these circles would be the probability of it not happening, not A or B. So we know that where A and B intersect is gonna be 0.2 because it tells us, 20%. Now we know that the probability of A is 0.7, but we already have 0.2 inside the circle. That means, 0.5 will go there. Why? Because 0.5 and 0.2 gives us 0.7. Now we know that the probability of B is 0.4, but if we've already used 
point two of that, that means B itself is also going to be point two. Now, if you were to add up those numbers, point five plus point two plus point two, that actually gives us point nine. But remember, everything has to be 100%. So if point nine happens inside these circles, that means point one does not. One minus point nine. So again, if you add these together, this is a mutually exclusive event. Remember that P of A plus the P of B minus where they intersect, P A and B. P of A is 0.7, P of B is 0.4. You gotta subtract the 0.2 and you get 0.9. Well, it needs to be 100%. So if 0.9 is a probability of them happening, that means there's a 10% chance or a 0.1 of it not happening. So, find the probability that A occurs, but B does not. Well, A occurs 0.7, but 0.2 of that amount also occurs with B. So therefore, for it only be an A, the answer is gonna be 0.5. What's the probability that neither A nor B occur? That is going to be 0.5. One, which is going to be outside of the Venn diagram. Now, there is something called a conditional probability, which means the probability is written as a notation for what's the if the probability? Sorry. Now, there is something called the conditional probability. Is the con, is the probability of an event B that the event will occur given that the knowledge that A has already occurred? It is written as the probability of B slash A, where on top is the probability of B and A occurring, divided by the probability that A has already occurred. So, for example, let me move me back down. A survey of high school students find that 43% are involved in school sports, so let's make this sports. 32% take AP courses, so let's say that these are AP courses. Okay, we know that 43% I'm sorry, 43% are involved in school sports, 32 take AP courses, and 12% are involved in both. So we automatically know that 12% goes there because that's where they're involved in both. So if 0.43 is sports, but 0.12 is already inside the circle, that means a 0.31 is sports only. And if AP courses is a 0.32 and 0.12 are already taken, that means 20% only take AP courses. They don't include sports at all. Now we need to check this math. 0.31 plus 0.12 plus 0.20. This only gives us 63%. That means that there are a certain number of students who don't do either sports nor AP courses. So if 63% do at least one or the other, that means one minus that, meaning 0.37 students don't do any of it. Now, that's the Venn diagram. Find the probability that a student takes an AP course given that they play a sport. Here is that conditional probability. So the probability is P is A and B occurring over the probability of what was given, okay? So A and B is where they intersect. So the probability of that is 0.12 given that they play a sport. And how much, how many people play a sport? It is 0.43, not 0.31. But these 12% in here do play a sport, so you do have to include them of the number that plays a sport. So 0.12 divided by 0.43 is going to be 0.279. So almost 28% of students take an AP course given that they do play a sport. Tree diagrams, not gonna lie, these are actually my favorite. <laughs> okay, let's go back. 
the probability that the max temperature tomorrow will be 30 degrees or below is 0.5 or 50%. So here we go. We have the probability that the max temperature is going to be 30 or below. We have a 50% chance of that happening, which means if it is higher than 30 degrees, that means we also have a 50% chance happening, obviously, because remember, it has to add up to 100%. Now, when the temperature is 30 or below, my car will not start. Uh, the probability of a car will start is 0.7. So only here, only given that it's 30 below, conditional probability, okay, given it's 30 below that my car will not start is 0.7, a 70% chance which means what's the chance that it will start? That means there's a 0.3 chance that it will start because remember, each time it's gotta be 100%. So what is the probability that the max temperature of tomorrow will be 30 or below? So we're looking down this, uh, this tree branch and we wanna know what's the probability that the max temperature will be this or below and my car will start. Well, you actually multiply the numbers together. So when you follow the tree, you want to know when it's going to be 30 below, and then you want to know the probability that it will start. So it's 0.5 along with 0.3. So 0.5 times 0.3 is going to give me a 0.15 or 15%. So the probability that that one, it's going to be 30 degrees or below because you weren't even given that yet. Like you don't even, you only have a 50% chance of that happening. And then so first that has to happen. And then on top of that, your car will start and it will be a 15% chance. So whenever you follow the tree branch, you're going to multiply the probabilities as you go along.